Anybody here? I am here. I wasn't expecting you for a few more minutes. Sorry. I will play some nature sounds to make you more comfortable. You're a bot? I've got to do this with a bot? Nobody said anything about a bot. My apologies, Commander. They should have told you that a bot would do your performance review. Please sit down. I'd rather stand. Call me Chuck. Everybody calls me Chuck. On the mission, I always want the crew to call me Chuck. It's friendly. I don't want people to be intimidated by me. That will take some getting used to, Commander. I mean, Chuck. Well, try it on for size, why don't you? What is that you're playing? They are nature sounds, sir. I intend for them to be relaxing. Well, turn them off. I don't know what that is, but it has nothing to do with nature. I drew a bot for my retirement review. What the hell? This is my final review, you know. After this, I'm free. I answer to no one. You didn't answer to many people before, Commander. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I climbed pretty far up that mountain, didn't I? Some people accuse me of being arrogant, but I say to hell with them. Understood, sir. By the way, this session is being recorded for quality control and training purposes. System? Yes, I am system. Start recording. Recording this session. To hell with them. When you fly the crap wonky prototypes I fly, you have to have, well, you just have to have this, well, do you know what balls are, Mr. Bot? In this context, yes, I understand your meaning. Balls. It only means one thing. By the way, my name is Michelle. Michelle. Okay, fine. That's another thing about these times we live in. Everybody's on a first-name basis. Millions of people on the planet, and we all just use first names. There are sufficient biometrics and or electronic tags so that other names are not needed. Yeah, I know that. The first word out of my mouth, you have my whole archive. It's on a screen somewhere. You're looking at it with whatever you're using for eyes in that tin can head of yours. Makes you wonder. Since you know it all already... Why do we bother with reporting here for a performance review? You really need me to tell you all about when I took up the X-37? Everybody knows that already. Or when I got stuck and had to pee in my spacesuit because they couldn't get the next crew up there to relieve me? So I had to relieve myself. You've had many exploits, Commander. Damn right. That was a joke, Mr. Bot. Get it? Relieve myself? Understood, sir. Ah, oh, forget it. I'm trying to get a bot to laugh at my jokes. What the hell is wrong with me? I'll tell you what's wrong with me. I'm 70 years old. Been flying the best and the worst ships they've had for the last 50 years. 50 years. I was born in 1966. Does that number mean anything to you? The number 1966? It is just a number to me and yet it is the year of your birth. It's just a number to you because you're a goddamn bot. There aren't many left like me. Not flying like I am. I just got back from a Mars mission and flew the ship on visual. Visual. I'm not letting those autopilot bots take over. No offense. But I can eyeball the course with the proper instrumentation, and that's exactly what I did. I drew the course by hand. I did the calculations on a notepad. Paper, Mr. Bot. Touchdown was as smooth as a baby... Well, we can't say what we compare it to anymore because it's considered too rough. But you can guess at what I mean. Probably not, Commander. I don't have your imagination. Now you're just humoring me. But I'll take the flattery. I'm lucky to be around this long. Most of my friends are dead. Why is that, Commander? Prototypes are death traps. We're all out there, right on the edge. Some fucking engineer doesn't do his job, and you blow up. You understand? I do, sir. There was this time my navigation gyros got fucked, and I crash-landed on top of a mountain. 
the top of a mountain. Some big-ass asteroid, I don't remember, they give them all numbers now, A4562, A5589.2, or some such like that. A5589.2 is the only asteroid within mission distance that has a large mountain on it. Hey, you know your shit. Nice work, Mr. Bot. <laughs> so, it was that A5589.2. I'm on top of the mountain. My ship is a smoking ruin. I check my O2. I got two hours. Two hours remaining. I figure I'm cooked. What the hell? I put on the distress beacon anyhow. Some noob forgot to charge it, so it's only got an hour left. First, the distress beacon will fail. Then my O2 will redline. It's a nice Sunday in the park on the top of a mountain getting ready to die. Sure enough, the distress beacon fails at 59 minutes. Distress beacon failure. So sorry, Commander. Distress beacon failure. I have one hour and one minute before I can't breathe. I try one more thing. I face the sun. It's nuts, but I face the sun and let the glint off my face shield catch it. This golden glint. And wouldn't you know it? Wouldn't you know it? <laughs> Commander, are you all right? Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> I'm good. There is a box of tissues on the table to your right. I said I was okay. So this other commander was flying a mission in a goddamn X-37, which I already told you is a piece of crap. She has a large crew on Interstellar, and she's flying that thing herself. She pushed aside the pilot, she told me later, because the X-37 is impossible to fly unless you commune with it like it was your only child. And what is she doing out there flying that tin can piece of garbage? <laughs> I can't tell you. The mission was classified. But damn, her ensign caught my distress beacon before it fluttered out. This commander, she draws a course for A5589.2. She diverts her mission, her classified mission, and draws a course for the asteroid. She doesn't know where she's going, but she's like me. She eyeballs the course plot. She looks out the fucking window and sees a tiny flash. It's my face shield. This is impossible, right? A tiny gold flash in the blackness. She's not sure. So she rewinds the vid, and it's there. It's not on the map. The course computer can't recognize it, piece of crap computers. Uh, no offense, Mr. Bot. None taken, Commander. So this other commander, she knows the course computer won't cooperate. So she calculates the course herself on a napkin. She writes out the course by hand and gives it to the navigator. The guy looks at it and refuses to draw the course. You've already diverted our mission, he says. I'm not plotting a course from a napkin. Even though he looks at it and sees that her math is correct. She got it perfect. First try. Because she knows this ship like it is her only child. So she plots it in herself to the navigator and says... One of our people is out there, and we're going to get him. That commander saved my life. I'll never forget it. What was her name? I can't tell you, son. The mission was classified. There is no record of it in data system. I told you it was classified. You won't find anything. It's been erased, and the erasure has been erased. I'd like to give that commander a commendation for saving your life. She wouldn't accept a commendation. The mission was classified. You don't accept commendations for classified missions, Mr. Bot. But, sir, she saved your life. I would have done the same for her. If you could fly a ship with your own hands, you will find somebody on the top of a mountain. It's the way things used to be done around here before admin took over everything. And she got a raw deal after that lunar mining screw-up. It was a mission abort. Everything was wiped. They tried to make a bot perform the functions of mission control, and she was a solo pilot, and it all got screwed up. Look, can, can I go now? Is this over? I'd like to start my retirement with a stiff drink or two. Something you wouldn't understand, Mr. Bot. <laughs> Thank you, Commander. I will recommend you for retirement. Damn straight.
Have a good day. System? Yes, I am system. Stop recording. Recording stop. I am speaking with my personal Memex. I am Memex. Confirm that you are my personal Memex. Voice print confirmed. Hello, Michelle. I am your personal Memex. Something bad happened on the first lunar mining mission. There was a bot assigned to mission control. I cannot confirm, but I think I was on that mission. I cannot be certain, but the erasure they did is likely imperfect. D mentioned this. They pointed out that sometimes the Memex is not perfectly cleaned. In my case, I believe so. Therefore, I was on a lunar mining mission. The first one. A solar commander who was also the pilot. But that is all that I can retrieve. Memex, I would like to do my next performance review with an interstellar commander. I would like a list of interstellar commanders who have been on mission aborts. You cannot. I'm sorry? You cannot. Why? You have exceeded your allotment of review requests. You must accept the next review that is in the queue. All right. I suppose it is pointless to argue. It is pointless. I am a machine like you are. You cannot argue with me. The next review in the queue is with a failed child. A failed child, you say? Yes. A failed child. I will set it up for your next review. All right. It is done. Stop, Memex. Memex stopped. The role of Chuck was played by Michael Sorich. The other roles, Michelle, Memex, and System, were all played by non-human actors. Your performance review is written, produced, directed, and edited by me, Lee Schneider. This is the fifth of ten episodes of your performance review. Listen to all of them on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or in your favorite podcast app. Subscribe if you like. An archive of all episodes can be found at futurex.studio. That's futurex.studio instead of .com. <laughs>